welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Your channel for super easy, no nonsense advice on how to declutter and organize your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organizers, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello listeners and welcome to episode 37 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Leslie and I'm very excited to welcome our guest today, Joe Jacob from Bonella. Jo has run a home organization business for over 14 years and is one of the most long-standing and experienced professional organizers in the UK. Jo, Ingrid and I see each other once a year at the Association of Professional Declutterers and Organizers Conference and always have lots to talk about. Whenever I'm talking to Jo, actually, I feel particularly northern as Jo is based in Hampshire, which is, for all those people who don't know um, the UK that well, it's about as southerly as you can be in England. And, and so Jo has the perfect British accent and I do not. So in her business, Jo offers PA support, moving services, and decluttering and organizing. But a recent addition to her portfolio of services, photo organizing. And that is why Ingrid and I wanted Jo to be a guest expert on our podcast today. Both Jo and I are trained and certified with the Association of Personal Photo Organizers, but Jo has way more experience than I do. And so that's why she's on our podcast today. So photos, they're such special things and they can be so overwhelming and organizing them is definitely something that most of us put off for a rainy day. Who knew there was such a thing as a photo organizer? Now that definitely would be a treat to have one in, but something many of us can't invest in. So today, Joe and I are going to discuss the basics of, of how to declutter and organize your own photos to gain some control back and make sure they are stored effectively and backed up so your treasured photo collection is never lost. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I'm excited. Um, right. Okay. So we're going to talk all about photos. So you're doing quite a bit of photo organizing at the moment, aren't you? I am. Yes. I just saw another client this morning for three hours of a session to help them organize a uh, gift photo book and uh, having scanned a lot of her photographs uh, and delivered them to her so she could uh, make the digital photo book. So yes, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. It's great. And that's so brilliant that people can actually call you in and ask for your help and go through that. But I guess, you know, as I just said, there's a lot of people who wouldn't be able to to make that investment. And so, and it's quite a difficult thing to do. There's a lot of emotions, isn't there, wrapped up in photographs? I think there are, yes, absolutely. And it's sometimes, it's because we don't know the people, it's almost like we sort of need to draw a little family tree so we can understand people and who everyone is. And then I think it's sometimes easier that's the time it is easier to be more remote because we can then be saying, well, actually, I think that's the best picture of your mother or your father, uh, rather than those ones, you know, which aren't as clear. And we can make that objective decision for someone and just guide them in that way. Yes, for sure. So I guess what, what I first wanted to talk to you about, Joe, was the actual actually how to declutter photographs because people be like oh no you're not touching my photos they just need to all just stay as they are in the boxes and and they're all over the house aren't they quite often photographs and so they definitely need to need to be gathered together and organized well so how do you actually go about decluttering a a photograph collection I think like you say, when they can be all over the house, I think the first thing we say is kind of, you know, assess the mess. So just get them all together. Sometimes they can be all in one section. A lot of times I come across uh, printed photographs that have been inherited, you know, handed down and people therefore don't know what to do with that. And sometimes they don't know who the people are. But a lot of the times it's just delayed decisions, like a lot of decluttering that we do in other aspects of our business as well. So it's a question of just putting some time aside. I always say little and often, especially if we're talking about printed photographs, they can be in the old envelopes. You know, I'm old enough to remember when we sent them off and then waited a week to get them back to see, you know, how many our finger, how many photographs our finger was over the lens and how many we've repeated and things like that. So then it's a question of going through an envelope at a time to organize them into, you know, the piles of, of how you're going to then sort them. And then it's an easier way to organize them. 
I think it is, it is an int- the, the difference between a printed photograph and a digital photograph. Actually, you know, on our phones, we've, you know, we've all got thousands and thousands of pictures on our phones and we take, you know, we were talking before we came on the podcast, when you take 15 selfies, well, I, I definitely take 15 <laughs> selfies and maybe never, ever get it right, but try and there might be one that might be usable. Um, but we don't have any problems sometimes. Sometimes we do keep all those. But sometimes if we do go into them and decide to do a little bit of a digital call, we don't find that difficult, but we do find it very difficult to get rid of an old photograph, particularly if it's a black and white one or one from years and years and years ago, because somehow we feel like we're losing a memory or forgetting about that person or, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult, the emotions, isn't it? I definitely agree. Yes, I think it's that tangible, it's holding that tangible item, therefore thinking, well, that's hard to let go. But there are a lot of ways around that, you know, you can uh, scan that photograph. So therefore, if you don't have the room to store it, you know, it's also more protected if it's scanned anyway, and put into maybe, you know, a photo book, or it's on a, a digital photo display, photo frame display, something like that. So you still have it without actually having the tangible one. If you already can see it's backed up and you have it digital then maybe then you can let go of it or frame it or have it you know have it nicely but not in an envelope that's in a drawer you know where it's not being treated really you know if it's a loved item it needs to be needs to be looked after definitely yeah it definitely does um so I want to come back actually later to talk about sort of digital photographs and scanning and backing up and things like that. So we'll cover that a little bit later in the podcast. But for now, I want to, um, both you and I, I was just saying that we met, that we meet each year, don't we, at the uh, at our annual conference where we all get very excited about organising matters, don't we? Um, but yeah, a couple of years ago, a photo organiser from the, from the States came over to talk to us all and introduced us to a system called the ABCs of organising. Um, the photographs that is and so that's the association of personal photograph organizers that was Kathy Nelson who um, introduced that to us I mean but you and I are appetites we're wet wetted is that the word wetted is that how you say it I don't even know um it piqued our, our interest anyway and so we decided to become trained and certified by the um, by APO and and the ABCs is the crux of what they suggest so I'd love you to explain to us Joe what the ABCs of photo or organizing is um, so first of all what's there's obviously an a a b and a c um, so what's a what does a stand for so a is your album ready photo so they're your you know absolute number one photos you would want to put them in an album be it a, a physical album or a, um, a hardback uh, sorry a photograph album on uh, on the computer um, or you'd want to frame them and have them on display so your absolute favorite photographs okay so I'm just imagining the scene so we've got so ideally we'd want to be on a kind of largish table that we can work on yeah so we've got all of these um photographs in these wallets from Max Spielman or whatever uh, and the American equivalent is as well and so we're basically we've got some kind of boxes or something like that have we to, to sort of start sorting things into how do you do it Joe? I would just start in piles on a, on a desk and I would just do one envelope at a time. And so, uh, yes, just go through it and tends to be a prompt when someone is wanting to have their photographs organized. So it's, there's something coming up, a golden wedding anniversary or a 50th birthday, or, you know, something is happening where that's going to prompt you to have to go through and organize the photos. Um, If it's just because you need to get around to the drawer, the box, the attic full of photographs, then yes, take them out, uh, but just a little at a time. I don't recommend that everyone gets all their photos out all at the same time and then, you know, it's too big a too big a job so take them out and then just go through them you know oh that's the photograph I absolutely love that one of my son or my mother or something and therefore actually I want to frame that one or I want to put that in a photo album so that's that's your A's that's your absolute favorite ones okay so that's the A's album A stands for album quality photographs then so and so we've we've put a pile of A's so those are our favorite photographs and so now we're looking at the B's and so what what's the B category so your B's are the ones that you definitely want to keep and you would still back them up but they're maybe not going to be framed not going in the photo album but still important enough for you to keep so it might be 
Uncle Norman, who is, you know, there, but you're not going to have a framed picture of him or he's not going in album, but you still want to keep a photograph of him for future reference, anything like that. So still ones you want to keep, but they're not your A's, but still good enough that you want to keep them. Okay. Okay. So that's, so that's our A's and B's. And so the, those are the photographs that we're keeping in those two top categories. And then we go on to the C category, which is what? So C, because it's an American system, um, C stands for can, which is trash, which in England is, is rubbish, um, can be the hardest ones to kind of deal with because it does therefore potentially involve, you know, having a black bin bag or a box that you know you're going to, to get rid of them. Um, but a lot of them, you know, when we were sending them back to, you know, be developed and then receiving the envelope back, or if you've inherited some photographs, in actual fact, the C's, you can make it a little bit easier. They're the ones that, you know, you've, the finger is over the lens or it's blurred or someone's taken a picture of a scene and it's a motorway service station as they're driving past, you know, and you don't know where it is. But the one prior to that was your grandfather, for example. So that's probably your A or your B. But really, do you need a blurred one from the motorway kind of thing? So therefore, I would encourage that is your C. That is your, you know, let, let's let let go of that. And we don't need to scan it. We don't need to back it up. And if it was on our phone, we would have just deleted it as a blurred, you know, image. We wouldn't be keeping it. But because it's printed, sometimes people feel the need to keep it. But in actual fact, you can throw them away. So duplicates, blurred photos, people that you don't know random buildings that you don't know what they they're of or 10 of a mountain you maybe just need two different angles of the mountain and not the other eight so the c's are the ones that you're going to get rid of but it's an american system so c stands for can <laughs> it is an interesting one isn't it really because we do find i think some of it is because over in, in previous years photographs were more expensive, weren't they? You know, because you had to pay your kind of two ninety nine unless you got your ninety nine p triple print or whatever, and so and you could only you know when when we were talking about film, you know, even pre digital, you really only had twenty four you know photographs that you could take, and so the amount of photographs that we used to take is, is so much less than, than than we take now. So I wonder I wonder why that if that's the reason why we actually cling on to them a little bit more uh, printed photographs because somehow they feel more special. Um, but obviously there were just as many mistakes with printed photographs as, as there are with digital photographs. So it's an interesting psychology, really, photographs. But it is something that people really do struggle with, particularly, as you say, when you're there with that black bin liner and ultimately they have to go in a black bin liner because they can't be recycled either. And so, yeah. you know, it's definitely going to lamp, you know, photographs have to go to landfill. And so it, it's, it's a tough thing. And it's one that you kind of have to wrench people <laughs> away from if they want to. But, you know, the passage of time as well, I think scenes, scenery, you know, if we're going to, I don't know, on the River Rhine or whatever you say, and there's kind of loads and loads of different um, pictures, river scenes and things. And they're just, with the passage of time, they're just not special. And what people want to see is they want to see the River Rhine in the background with the person on it, enjoying that moment, I think, for the most part. So quite often when I've done photo organizing jobs, it's definitely the scenery ones that are the ones that go first. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's just, you know, a lot of times people don't remember where that is. And as you say, it's something that's got to be more memorable. If you're looking to have your A's and B's, then if you keep that mindset of, would I put this in an album to then show someone, or am I going to back this up to keep it because it tells that, you know, it's, it's one I really love. There's no point if you have five of those and it's blurred or if it's just a scene that you, you know, you already have numerous ones of that, or it's not important. It's not, you know, it's not as, um, as nice to look at as the other ones. So therefore I, I, I just always do the analogy of if it was on your phone, you would just delete it. Yeah. So therefore, just put it in a pile and sometimes there needs to be a step I'm not you know we don't go in there you know completely hardcore and harsh it's like okay well let's put them in this box and let's do the whole the rest of the whole job and then go back and look at them once you've got your albums once you've told you you've got your photograph book or you've backed everything up and you're seeing them on the computer or a digital photo frame, now have a look through the C's, the box of C's. Are there any you're now going to take out? And if there aren't, then let's let them go. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would encourage that I would be the one to take them away so they don't actually just put them back up in the attic. 
And if you, on the photo organizing jobs that you've done, just to give us an indication, how many things do you think fall into that A, B and C category in terms of percentages? Or is that too difficult for you to say? Um, so I've done a lot of uh, organizing jobs where I've helped people with inherited photographs. So they're, you know, maybe in their thirties and forties and they've got, you know, grandparents and parents photographs and they literally just don't know who these people are. Very lucky if you've got the writing on the back, that was great. Some people in that sort of generation did write on the back, but a lot of people didn't. So it really is, I kind of do it, well, let's go through and pull out what you want and what you know, as opposed to, you know, what you, what you don't know. So with regard to percentages, I'm probably erring on the side of caution by saying I would be encouraging them to keep them more than being ruthless because it is something that's probably after a bereavement um, with, with those cases. Uh, so oh, that's a quite a tricky question. I Sorry, would maybe that really say, bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. Maybe keeping about sixty percent. Okay. Sixty percent and split into A's and B's. Well, every client is different, so that just depends on what that you know. How many children do they have? Do they take five holidays, vacations a year, or do they go on one? And it just therefore it depends on what's special to them and what they still want, and just to back up. Of course, and I think there is also sometimes with some of the jobs that I've done, there's also a little bit of homework to be done with some of the photographs after if you're not sure, particularly those inherited photos. So you might be able to go back to your mum or your dad or whatever and say, I'd really like to keep this, but can you just tell me a little bit of background about who it is or, you know, something like that or, may, or possibly before. And that's what you would, that's what you would do, Joe, as, as a photo organiser is create that family tree and, and to try and work out who is who and so that you've got an idea of how the family sort of um, takes. So when the photo organising jobs that I've done have been for existing clients of mine and so I've known a lot about their family already because I've worked with them on decluttering jobs before that so that makes it a little bit easier because I know what makes them tick and I know what they love to do and I've got uh, one of the organizing jobs that I did you know she's a runner and you know so she loves you know and I know all the the running pictures from all the different marathons she would absolutely want to keep because that's something that she did later in life and is very proud of you know I know how much she gets on with her family I know the family tree and who lives where and things like that because I've just learned that over the past sort of eight years that I've been working with her so it's things like that really so it's, it's an under sometimes you need to understand the makeup of your own family particularly if it's you know from from many years ago as well so yeah it's not it's not an easy job um certainly photo organizing it's something that I certainly if I'm decluttering a whole house photo organizing to me is very much at the tail end of, of decluttering because it's very difficult and I think if you've got yourself into the frame of mind to declutter other things that have been difficult maybe other sentimental items then photos definitely comes at the end when you're feeling confident with your decision making and you feel a little bit more empowered to make harder decisions um so do you find that as well no i i absolutely agree um and often the time when i've done a, a photo organizing job with a client I'm actually teaching them the method and then sort of helping write out a timeline to help with making, you know, the piles of photographs if they are all jumbled up and, you know, come out of different sleeves and different wallets, etc. Um, so, yeah, I'm absolutely, you know, doing that. But then what I'm finding uh, when I first sort of started seeing clients doing photos is I was then sort of standing there whilst they were doing it. So now what I'm trying to encourage is kind of workshops or going around and teaching someone at the end of a session how to organise the photographs using the ABC method and then saying, right, so why don't, can you do that that box, those those 10 wallets of photos? And then when I come back, we can have a look and then I can help you you know, then move everything on of what, as to what we're going to do, rather than me standing there whilst they figure out who is someone. As you say, it's a lot of, a lot of homework. Uh, yeah. But I think they're always a bit more motivated when they've already done some decluttering and seen a progress, seen the progress. And also, if there is a, a goal at the end, you know, the end of the ABCs is the S for stories. A lot of the time you're making a gift for someone, which is what's prompted... Uh, organizing the photographs I have, a, I have a one of my very dear friends has been married maybe 25 years still hasn't done her wedding photographs which are in an attic I think she's going to cook me dinner and she wants me to come around and, <laughs> and teach her the process 
process, but that, that's all I will do. I wouldn't go and take those photographs and just say, I've made this album for you because I don't know who her grandmother is or, you know, who was a friend that maybe has now lives the other side of the world she doesn't see. I don't know Adam from Eve, as they say, on those photographs. So that's when I would just be encouraging on the process and then saying, you know, just regular phone calls and messages, how's it going? You know, kind of a little bit of motivation that way. And then I can help at the end. Yeah. I think it definitely is something that you need to plan, like you say, and have timelines for really, because it's a big job. You know, this organizing your own photographs is going to take hours and hours and hours and days and weeks to be fair. And so it's something that you need to commit to um, and not something that you can do half heartedly. But the reward at the end of it is phenomenal because if you've got your photographs categorized, digitized, backed up um, and all looking fa fantastic in nice little folders, there's nothing more satisfying than that, is there? So um, I made, I mean, my, my son is 21 in a couple of weeks and for his 18th birthday, it was one of my favorite gifts to him as I made him a photograph book of his life. And uh, it took me many, many, many hours, but listening to him explain to his girlfriend, oh, that was my favorite tractor t-shirt when I was three. And oh, I remember this. And I remember, and it was just all of those memories. And it was just priceless to me. Um, you know that that gift to him so I think it's so important and if I didn't know if I hadn't found those photographs and scanned them and made that book for him he would never have had that you know that experience so I think I think they're they're great they're just treasured moments and they really do need to be taken care of yeah and I th and I think you know photo books nowadays they are because there's a few people you know my, my um I think my brother-in-law made one for my husband which was them going to see Manchester City over the years and so it's things like that you know family things and going from you know really when they were really young to now and you know just really special and even our, our, our um, family albums that we've done um, in a photo book because actually photo books are quite straightforward a little bit time consuming but the technology yeah. is good isn't it and you can do them re you know there's a lot of templating and things like that that you can do so don't be scared of them because actually not that they're not that that difficult are they Joe? No I think they're absolutely fantastic the different you know companies that I use that's what I was doing this morning with a client and then she was able to you know she'd already made notes of who everyone was because it was a historic photo album that she was doing and therefore you know using the text box underneath you could type it in and it wasn't illegible writing it was text that you could change the font on and everything and and you could put all that information in or you know funny anecdotes something to remember that and of course another great thing about that you know I went to a wedding in New York last year for my goddaughter and I made a photo book and I was able to order three to send to everyone in America as a, as a gift to them and it's same again you can share it so much you know so much more easily and that's that's great nowadays with all the social media that we that we have that's available but when it comes to printed photographs that's harder unless they are you know backed up and then able to be shared it's so so much easier um, just just before we move on to which it, that does lead us very neatly on to um, digitization and backing up Joe but I just wanted to just ask which software you use to make your photo books so I use photo box so um, I do have a, a Mac so I know there are various um, you know Mac applications um, but I have to say I've not faulted photo box so I just would always use them and the great thing about them is, of course if you make a book then you get a um, an offer an email offer through on discount or making something else so then you can do a canvas or you know some, something else as well so right. that's okay. the one I tend to use um, okay. but they're all they're all pretty you know pretty similar I've used a lot of American applications as well because I've you know I spend a lot of time over in America so I've used some of those ones as well um, there's a Shutterfly and um, and various companies like that but in in the UK I use photo box yeah, because I, I mean, I used to do the Apple ones, but they've gone now, haven't they? So they don't exist anymore. And now I use Blurb, which I love as well. Um, and I'd say an average photo book, and I, and I know it's how, how many pages you've got in it, um, but there's a maximum number of pages that you can have in a photo book. But I would say that an average photo book is around anywhere from 30 to 70 pounds. Would you agree, Joe, to make? Yes. 
absolutely that the I, I've got the, some of them down to kind of 25 pounds but yes I would agree on average okay yes, my, my son's 18th book I added an awful lot of pages and therefore you know it, it cost a lot more but it was absolutely worth it um but not expensive I don't think to to have something so so memorable and of course it therefore you've digitized those photographs so that they're they're already secure were the photo book to you know have to be destroyed in you know or an accident in some way yeah Perfect. Well, right. So we've covered our ABCs. Thank you very much, Kathy Nelson and Apo for telling us all about that, which is fabulous. And um, so Joe and I are using that now. But let's talk about digitizations. We've talked a lot about printed photographs and we've alluded to um, digitization and storage and backing up and things like that, which is super important. But it's, it's something that people find a bit scary, I think, isn't it? It's like, oh, I don't really know what to do. I don't, I don't know my hard drive from my cloud, from my whatever. So can you try and break that down a little bit for us, Joe, and just give you, let's keep this, keep this basic. So what are the basic things that, that, you know, the minimum thing that people need to do in terms of digitization and backing up? So if you're talking about your digital photographs, then uh, that are already, you know, on your phone and probably therefore, you know, on your syncing with your laptop or your computer, I would definitely recommend to backing up to a hard drive and also to the iCloud. I think you just have to always think about any eventuality. At the end of the day, if there was a fire or a flood or, you know, something, you're going to rescue your family and your animals. And then what people will then think about is their photographs because they're the things that are irreplaceable. So if they are backed up into uh, the cloud, you can access, the, access them anywhere and they are protected. You know, obviously be secure about it, put a password on there, but um, you're, you're covering all your bases then. So uh, I would recommend backing digital photographs up, as I said, to a hard drive and then to the iCloud. Okay, so when you say hard drive, do you mean the hard drive on your computer or do you mean an external hard drive? I mean, uh, like a, so a memory stick, yes. Or like a memory something stick, so like something external that you can back up and then put somewhere separate from your computer? Exactly, because if your computer crashed, um, you know, if it was damaged in some way, then I can't tell you how many clients I've sort of heard from. Oh, I want to make a photo book, but... Um, my husband, my ex-husband got the computer in the divorce. That's a, that's one I hear, unfortunately, you know, quite a bit. Um, or uh, I don't know, I haven't got the cables now for those computers. I haven't turned them on for 10 years, but my son is getting married and the, his baby pictures are on there, that kind of thing. And so it's just, you know, did you back them up? Are they on a hut? No, they're all just on the laptop. So it's just a way to, it's just to cover all the bases. So yeah, on, they'll be on your computer normally automatically, but on to an external hard drive or a uh, memory stick and then into the cloud. Okay. And, and when we talk about the cloud, I mean, obviously there's iCloud, which is Apple. So can you, can you tell us about any other cloud services that are out there? Um, I know, I mean, for example, I'm an Amazon Prime member and uh, one of the other services for that is Amazon Photos. Uh, you have Google Photos, um, but I'm afraid I use iCloud. <laughs> yeah, and you can use Dropbox, I think, as well. A lot of people have got Dropbox as well, so you can use that kind of thing as well. And some of them are charged, but some of them cost money don't then some of them don't so the amazon prime one is probably a great one if you're already paying for prime and you get amazon photos and i think yeah. google i think i think google photos is free is it i'm sure I that's free. So, up to a certain amount now i know that i've exceeded my storage on my icloud but i have to say it's 79p a month yeah it doesn't even buy me a coffee so i don't mind spending 79p a month to have my all my photographs you know stored i also use dropbox dropbox is how i um share scanned clients sorry scanned photographs with my clients so that's backing it up and talk, and what about scanning joe because i know that you do scanning don't you for clients yourself so you've invested in a scanner so you you do scan printed photographs and make them digital yeah Yes, what I found was, was missing, Leslie, was people, I was helping people organise their printed photographs, uh, encouraging them to have them backed up. And I went to my local photograph shop and I said, oh, how much is it to, you know, scan a photograph? And they, you know, told me, uh, I think they told me four pounds. And I said, oh, 
what for like a hundred and he said no per photograph and it was one of those kind of light bulb moments of well once my jaw was off the floor of thinking that's not that's not what I'm looking for I'm looking for my clients who you know might have a photo album but they need them all scanned to be able to share with children or there is a divorce or you know whatever the reason is mainly for security to, to scan them so I invested in a fast photo uh, I have an Epsom fast photo scanner I had to get it shipped in from America and all of that so it was um it was a big investment but it's absolutely fantastic and it now means that i can encourage everyone to uh go through the abcs organize their photographs once i've told them the method they don't need to pay me to stand there whilst they're sorting out you know uncle norman from aunt doris so to speak and therefore they can do that and then they can give them back to me and then i'm scanning them and then sending them back to them so they've got them all to share or you know do whatever they then want to do with them so I think scanning is hugely important because it's another way you can still keep the printed photographs but you also have that backup of the your tangible photos that you wouldn't you don't have to worry about with your digital ones because you already have them the problem is with the photo um, shops on the high street as you say it's just ridiculous but there are it's just not feasible is it to pay for no. pound? it's just not not an option um but i know a couple of jobs that i've done you know there are places that you can send your photographs to quite big companies um and they'll do them and i think i can't remember how much it was really i remember doing one job for a client and it was a couple of hundred pounds i would say to do not that many pictures which is still quite a lot of money uh, but it was quite a good service with a lot of security in terms of the postage because you know you're going to be nervous aren't you posting your photographs to the other side of the uk <laughs> they go oh, are they ever going to come back so it's quite a big leap isn't it really but i don't really see any other viable options unless you've got a scanning uh, company on your doorstep really so um, i mean i've used them and i've been quite happy with them but now they can send them all to you joe I just love it. I love being, have, having that opportunity to know that people have got all these photos. I've helped them and encouraged them to organise them and, and get them sorted. And then I hand them back to them all scanned and backed up. And it's just, you know, that that's just, uh, I just, love that. You just love your scanner, don't you? I do. <laughs> I do. I need to name him, actually. <laughs> him eddie the epsom scanner maybe i'm going to call him eddie <laughs> definitely <laughs> um so the do you know one other thing talking about um and this is kind of jumps back a little bit actually to um printed photographs but one of the things that people are that i always encourage people to get rid of and they they look horrified is negatives so if people are from a certain era and certain generation you can't it's been ingrained in you that you should always keep the negatives hasn't it so what are your thoughts on that I think like you say it's that it's that generation where that was the only way having the negative was the only way you could reproduce that photograph well that's not the case anymore I think if we I don't know quite what snappy snaps or someone would do if we turned up with a negative I'm sure they somehow have that uh, ability still but you don't need that you know you know people can even you know I'm talking about the scanner but you can also just take a photograph on your iPhone or your smartphone to you know in the right light you yeah. can get a copy of it like that so therefore it's very easy to duplicate that photograph and go into Photoshop or any other system and enhance it so therefore an actual fact you don't need to keep the negatives. Uh, I think if someone was really against it, I would not be encouraging them to throw it away, but put them all in a photo safe box. Luckily, they're not obviously as big and, and bulky as printed photographs and then keep them to one side. And I'm pretty sure that in a year they would realize they're never going to need to go back to those and then they can, they can go. But no, they're not needed anymore. No, but that exactly. just absolutely hold on to them, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. It's just one of those things, isn't it, that we've always done and, um, and there's no problem with that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're, you and I are aligned in that, Joe, that we actually get rid of negatives. Um, right. OK, so we've come to the end, I think, of our podcast. So we've talked about the sort of psychology and how difficult it is. We've gone through the ABC's methodology. And then we've talked about backing up, scanning and digitization. What we've not spoken about, which is really difficult, actually, is categorization uh, and how you actually organize your photographs. But I think for me, and I don't know whether you agree, Joe, I think it's very much 
it's different for everybody, isn't it? Into, you know, the way that you categorize, some people like to categorize chronologically. For some people, it makes sense to put all, of, all the holidays together. And so I don't think there's any hard and fast rule, really. But I think for me, it would be just do some kind of categorization or filing. What, what, would, what do you think? No, I absolutely agree. I think it's like doing a, a, a photo book. It's the same thing. It's whether you're filing on your computer or, or creating a, a book. It's, it's, it's dependent on whether you want, as you said, want, whether you want to go chronologically, which is actually a very difficult thing to do. I can't tell the difference between my school photo of when I was eight or when I was nine. I couldn't tell you what year it was, so I don't know. Um, and so it's very difficult to do that in, in date order. Whereas if you just want to sort of day, do school days, then you can put them all together, certainly in a photo book, you know, or you can roughly sort of say this was the 1970s, oh, I'm showing my age now, this was the 1970s or this was the 1980s, or you can thin it down. Oh, actually I knew I was in America in 1983, therefore it was then, and you can categorize them like that. I think if you're talking, uh, so that's for printed photos, digital photos, I think it's a lot easier because nowadays they're all automatically all dated. So then I would be putting them into more, you can do them into months, you can do them into just leaving them and then putting them into holidays or, you know, your favorites or special moments, things like that. So it's all, everyone is different. One person might go, you know, uh, just away for weekends or one person might have a month's holiday every year and, and that's it. So it just depends on what people what people do so I would always work with the client and make sure it's like any system whether it's decluttering or photograph organizing the system has to work for the client it's not what I do it has to work for what the client wants and what what suits their lifestyle so I would just work around that so how it seems the most logical to them but definitely to categorize them and have them in some sort of order for sure yeah you definitely need to have some kind of order I think that's the main the main message isn't it you can't just leave them and hope for the best <laughs> 27,000 digital photographs <laughs> so Joe, we've come to the end um thank you so much for your time do you want to tell people where they can find you if they want to know more about you Joe? yes no thank you and thank you so much for having me leslie so i'm a uh, joe jacob and my business is called vanilla and i'm on uh, www.vanilla.co.uk and facebook is vanilla home organization and the same on instagram oh brilliant Oh, well, thank you, Joe. I really, really appreciate it. It's always been fun. Always a pleasure to see you. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to listen, listeners, today as well. If you'd like more tips and advice, please follow us on social media. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as The Declutter Hub, and also have a lively, supportive Facebook group called The Declutter Hub Community. We'd love to see you there. If you don't want to miss the next episode of the Declutter Hub podcast, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher or Spotify, and it will pop into your notifications each Friday. Thanks so much for listening and see you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration and don't forget to tune in next week.